I can also give it an outer glow. Click on outer globe. Again, don't, don't confuse clicking on it with selecting it. It must be selected. I can pick up maybe a similar color. I'm in color picker. I clicked on this little guy right here. I don't know why, but the default color in Photoshop is this cream color for the outer glow. Kind of odd. Click on, let's click on maybe green so you can see it. We'll click on the color. We'll say OK. And now again, we'll just play. You want to be bold here. I just gave it a green outer glow. There's lots of selections here. We could actually go to the bevel and emboss. This design might look pretty good beveled because it's already got a little edge to it, and I can actually uh, change the size. Oops, remember, I'm selected on outer glow. I need to be on bevel and emboss. And let's just change the depth, change the size, soften it. You can see what I'm doing here. And there's a lot of pre-done default items in layer style. If I click on styles, it brings up pre-done styles that are already pre-done. They don't make a lot of sense because this design already has some wording to it. And you can add to these also. There's dozens of these in Photoshop, actually probably hundreds. Let's cancel this screen out. So you can see that you can build designs in layers. You can affect them. You can lighten, darken, sharpen. You can apply tone curve to them. And this is how you build designs. And when you're done building your design, before you separate it, if you like what you have here, and again, remember from the article or the video about the background, I'm going to remove the, the wolf here, you need either a version with a white background and a version with a black background. This has a black background only. And you flatten the image. And you flatten it by going to the little arrow right here and come down to flatten image. It said to me, I want to discard hidden layers. Some of the layers were turned off. And there's my design. Flattened, done, finished. Now, if you save your design right now and don't rename it, you've lost your layers. It's common to come back and go, wow, I want to make a change, and the changes are gone. You must always, always, always. In fact, if you look at my computer hard disk, you'll see that most of my files are named layers or no layers. So I always know what file has the layers because it's common to go, wow, that looks great, and just click on save. And you have just lost all of your layers. No chance to come back other than to lasso around things. No chance to come back and lighten, dark, and sharp, and things like that. And so you must always remember to know what version of your file has layers in it. Let's talk about other tools in the toolbar. We've looked at the selection tools, the move tool. Let's look at the magic wand tool. Magic wand tool looks like a little magic wand, like a little sparkler. It selects areas of color, and it, it, it'll select areas that are just within a tolerance of so many colors. The default tolerance setting is 32 in Photoshop. That means if I click on magic wand right now, it's going to find this kind of this, uh, this, this neutral background here, and it's going to select all of these colors within 32 pixels of the color I select on. It may not make sense, but let's just click and see what happens. So it said, okay, these, even though there's a little bit of gradation here, these are all within 32 pixels of this cream kind of a color. If I hold down my shift key on the keyboard, I can add to my selection. Shift, shift, and I can click around. Magic Wand is widely used, commonly used, to remove backgrounds. Let's say I don't want George straight. This photo I've been using for years, he was obviously much younger here. Let's say I don't want George to be on this kind of this, this painter's cloth background. And by the way, you can see where I selected within his ear because it thought that the ear color there was similar, the same as the background. I'll leave that for now. But again, hold on the shift key, click, click, click. So I've selected around George. Now, this is, again, called a selection. And remember, I can actually now lighten, darken, sharpen my selection. But let's look at our toolbar. Down towards the bottom are two color swatches. They're called the foreground and background colors. This is the foreground color. This is the background color. And this is the default setting in Photoshop. Now, this little flippy arrow here, if you click on that, makes the foreground color white, the background color black. I can also click on one of these squares, click, and it brings up color picker. And I can pick a color. I can also click on a square, and if I look at my cursor now on the image, it's now eyedropper. I can click on the image and actually pick a color from the image. That's now my background color, and again, I can flip them, so this is the foreground color. The background color is the color you get when you erase, so if I pick on the eraser tool and erase, it erases to the background color. Right now, if I click on the eraser tool and erase, Again, I'll make my little brush tip a little bigger. If I erase now, 
And remember, I'm selected here, so I was trying to erase on the area that I wasn't selected. If I erase, it erases to white. Wow, see, I can do that because I'm selected on this. And I never let go of the mouse, so I can now un undo the mouse. I can do a Control-Z on the keyboard and undo it. So whenever you erase, you erase to the background color. Whenever you paint using any of the paint tools, the airbrush tools, any of these tools, you paint with the foreground color. As an example, I might think that George's face needs a little bit more flesh tone in it, but let's come back to that in a second. Right now I want to show you that if I press the delete key on the keyboard, because I've selected around George, delete on the keyboard, I delete to white. I'm going to do an undo, control Z. If I change the background color, the defaults to black, there's black as a background color, press delete on the keyboard, I've just given George a black background. And if you remember from the earlier videos uh, on preparing artwork for T-SEPs, you need a black version and a white version. Control Z, undo. Now, with selections, don't get confused here. I've selected around George. What if I want to select just George? I can inverse my selection. If I go to the select pull down menu, one of my options is inverse. Notice there's no marching answer around the edge, but now I've selected George. Now everything I do happens to George. I can go to image, adjustments, curves, lighten, darken. I can go to the dodge burn tool. Do too big. That's my tip, my tip of my brush. I can lighten, control Z, undo. I can sharpen, filter, sharpen, unsharp mask, which we cover in detail in the preparing artwork and fixing bad artwork. I can sharpen George. You can see the difference. Preview, unpreviewed, previewed. Huge difference. And I'm doing it without ever sharpening the background. I don't care about the background. And this is called Unsharp Mask. Now, let's remove the marching ants, Control D. Let's come back to the paintbrush tool. Let's click on the foreground color, sample flesh from George's face, say OK. Click on the paintbrush tool. Now I'm on a paintbrush. And now if I start painting, it paints that color. Again, I haven't let go of the mouse button. Let's do a control Z, undo. Let's do more of a practical application here. I'm on the paintbrush tool right there. And when I'm on the paintbrush tool, I want to click on and select the airbrush tool. I'm not sure why, but Photoshop moved the airbrush up here. I'm now on the airbrush tool. And I can say, let's make it not very opaque, a little less flow. And we're going to change the brush tip. Remember, this is the spray brush tip. I'm now on the airbrush tool. I'm going to airbrush flesh. And I might just kind of fix. This is where when you see the, uh, the model in the model photography and you go, wow, her face and her skin is so pure. How did they do that? This is what, oops, a little too far there. This is what happened. They went into Photoshop and they airbrushed her. And they took off the pimples and the imperfections and they did that to her. And that is how you paint in Photoshop. Let's cover a couple more tools real quickly. Things are a little fun. Now, a fun tool is called the Clone Stamp Tool. I click on it, and again, it has a brush tip. And just for fun, let's just pretend we want to make George into a uh, Cyclops. I'm going to put the tool over his eye, hold down the Alt key on the keyboard, and click. I just picked up his eye in this rubber stamp. So within the rubber stamp is his eye. If I now click up here, and you can see, look at the original eye. See the plus? You can see what we're cloning from. And the clone stamp tool tends to soften and soften the edges so it makes it a little little cool. I can click down here. And you can see it's not cloning from his eye. We'll undo that. The clone stamp tool is actually commonly used to clone over imperfections. Maybe it's a, a photograph. You can see right here I've got some junk because this file was a low res file. I could airbrush over some of this stuff, but I might just as easily pick up the clone stamp tool and alt click and pick up if you can see the original where I'm cloning from I'm just fixing things now if you had little flex from a bad scan maybe imperfections of the skin where you can clone over maybe a pimple or a freckle that's what the clone stamp tool is commonly used for now I obviously can't cover every single tool in this short tutorial Again, if you like this topic, uh, I have a two-DVD set 
that's available that's almost six hours of how to use Photoshop. But to get you started and using TCEPs, you just need to look at the image, check resolutions, fix things, make the artwork look better, uh, upsample if necessary. Let's talk about the type tool. Photoshop's strength is not type. Corel's strength is type. Illustrator's strength is type. In Photoshop, type is somewhat like word processing. You get this little eye beam, and if you click, it shows you a flashing cursor. Now, the property bar up here shows you the type size. It was set for 99.51 points, probably from the last job I did. Let's make this smaller. And now if I type, it's just like word processing. I now have to go to the Move tool, and some of these tools disappeared in my video display. Let's bring them back. Click on the Move tool, I can move it around. Click and drag. You'll notice that it made a new layer. This is called a type layer. So now we have a layer. I can click and drag just like in word processing, and this does not get any, any softer because this is vector right now. This is not pixels right now. This is vectors. Okay, I kind of like it there, and again, I must double click within it. Doesn't look like much, but if I go back to my type tool, on the property bar, one of my little blocks here is this. This is the text color. Click on that. It gets brings up color picker. Let's click on yellow. Click off the edge here and make it yellow. Now my text is yellow. Kind of boring. But now if I right click on this layer, it brings up blending options. I have no idea why they call it this because this brings up layer styles. It just should bring up layer styles automatically. And this is where some of the pre-done styles are kind of cool. They're pre-done. And again, you can actually load more of these by going to this little horizontal arrow and come down to uh, image effects. You can append that. Come down to, it fell off the screen, text effects. You can append to that. And now we can see what this thing will look like with all these different pre-dones. That's kind of fun, the puzzle. I'll cancel this out. We'll go back and right mouse click on this, blending options. But now we can also give it a stroke. We can change the stroke color. We can give it a drop shadow. We can give it a bevel and emboss. And we can have a lot of fun. And so in Photoshop, its strength is not text, but it will do text, and so it's not so bad. And we can also arch it, and we can do lots of other things to it. And that is the basics of doing type in Photoshop. Now, lastly, again, I'm not going to show you all these pull-down menus. Many of them are duplicates. Like in the Layers menu, you get to some of these options by being at the Layers palette. So many of these duplicate here and there. Photoshop has lots of filters. Think of a filter... And I needed to be on the background because I didn't like the, the fact I was on just the type. Think of being a filter as being an effect. And so filters do fun stuff. I can click on artistic, click on colored pencil, and it shows me George with a colored pencil kind of a look. Kind of neat. I can click on filter and come down to uh, distort and pinch, and there's George. I'm going to do an undo. I can also click on... The lasso tool, lasso around George's face kind of quickly. I'm just doing this very free form. And now this is a selection. Now the filter only works on my selection. Filter, distort, twirl, and have a little fun. And there's my poor buddy George twirled. So you get the idea. So you can spend way too many hours with filters. These are lots of filters, and you can play around and make artwork that is photorealistic look more like it's been a hand painting using filters. Those are some of the basics of using Adobe Photoshop to create images and manipulate images.